What's up? This is Mario and welcome to Awesome Audio. In this video we will talk about the four main characteristics of sound. Generally, the four most important characteristics of sound are intensity, duration, pitch, and timbre. Intensity, or amplitude, describes how loud or quiet a sound is. It is what we commonly refer to as volume, as in the expressions turn up the volume and turn down the volume. And it is physically given by the pressure variation in the wave. The more variation there is, the louder the sound. When plotted, it corresponds to the vertical axis of the wave. The key here is pressure variation, not just the pressure itself. Even if we find ourselves in a place with high or low pressure in the air, if this pressure does not vary, there is no sound. These are two sounds with different intensity. If we get picky, we should point out that the words intensity, amplitude, and volume mean slightly different things and are used in different contexts. Duration is simply the length of a sound from the moment we start perceiving it until we stop hearing it. For example, when we call someone and we wait for them to pick up the phone, each tone we hear lasts one second. And when we call someone but they are busy, the busy tones last approximately one third of a second. In music, the duration of a note is represented with different symbols, whose values are fractions relative to a whole note. These fractions are also the origin of their names, and they represent their relative length in time. At the same time, they also represent fractions and multiples of what is called a beat. The quarter note is usually assigned the value of a single beat, although it depends on each musical composition. For example, in some compositions, the value of a beat may be assigned to a half note or an eighth note. The duration of the notes, and therefore the speed of the musical composition, is defined through a parameter called beats per minute, or BPM, which establishes the number of beats that will fit in one minute. For example, if a musical composition has quarter note beats and a BPM value of 120, the duration of a quarter note would be 0.5 seconds. But if it had a BPM value of 150, then the same musical note would be 0.4 seconds long instead. Pitch is how low or how high a sound is. It's what allows us to recognize a musical note from another, such as a C from a G, even if they're coming from the exact same musical instrument. The characteristic that defines this is the frequency of the wave. Frequency means how many times the vibration pattern of a periodic sound repeats in a single second. When we talk about a periodic sound, we mean that its vibration pattern does not vary. Therefore, the wave is exactly the same each time it repeats. For example, a low frequency wave has a relatively slow vibration, and therefore a long wavelength. And a high frequency wave has a relatively fast vibration, and therefore a short wavelength. To understand why high frequency waves have a shorter wavelength than low frequency waves, we must recall that the speed of sound does not vary if the medium does not change. So, if the object vibrates faster than it is shown in the animation, but the propagation speed of sound does not change, then the regions of varying pressure will be closer together, and if they're closer, the wavelength is shorter. The speed of sound, the wavelength, and the frequency are related through the following equation. Last, we have timbre, which allows us to distinguish between two musical instruments or between the voices of two people, even if they are playing or singing the same musical note. This is what musicians usually refer to as the color of the musical tone. The characteristic that defines this is the waveform, and therefore its spectral content. Although analyzing sound from a spectral content point of view is more useful for analysis, for the moment we will look at it from a waveform point of view since it is easier to visualize. In the image, we see the waveforms of four instruments, violin, trumpet, flute, and oboe. We observe they all have a different waveform, which represents the way in which each of them will vibrate, and therefore what the pressure variations they will produce in the air will be like. It's because of these different waveforms that we end up perceiving each sound in a different way, even if they're playing the same musical note. For example, in this image, they actually are playing the same musical note, because although they all have different vibration patterns, each instrument's vibration pattern lasts the same time. Those who play the keyboard or have composed music via software surely have come across instruments called sine lead, square lead, sawtooth lead, etc. They are called like that because the waves they produce literally have these forms, a sine wave, a square wave, and a sawtooth wave. 
In this animation, we see what the pressure changes are like for a sine wave, which are gradual changes. For a square wave, the alternation between high pressure regions and low pressure regions would be more abrupt. Specifically, it would describe a region of high pressure which doesn't change for a period of time, and then it rapidly changes to a low pressure region, which lasts another short period of time without changing, and then suddenly it would again change to a high pressure region, repeating this pattern. With that, we conclude this episode. Now that you know about intensity, duration, pitch, and timbre in a sound wave, I recommend you to click on the animation or on the link included in the description for a video where you will see these concepts in action. You'll like it especially if you're into video games. In the next episode, we will go further into detail regarding frequency and its relationship with the pitch of a sound and of a musical note. If you enjoyed it, you may hit like, comment, and share to those interested. For more content like this, you may also subscribe. See you in the next video.